Hello and welcome to the webinar, the salient features of the proposed finance bill 2022, hosted by the Nordic Chamber of Commerce and Industries in Bangladesh. I am Ashur Rahman, the Executive Director of NCCI, your host for the evening. As you're all aware, the proposed national budget was placed at the parliament earlier this month by the Honorable Finance Minister, AHM Mustafa Kamal. The past year has been eventful indeed. While the rate of recovery for COVID-19 has taken a positive turn, several key events worldwide, including the Russia-Ukraine conflict, has adversely impacted trade and commerce at this critical juncture. The world economy is facing an inflationary pressure, while the cost of oil has reached a new height. Bangladesh economy is no exception. The impacts of the world market are being felt locally as well. Therefore, this proposed budget is of great importance. The changes in policies and tax structures will impact your businesses, which in turn will determine the economic growth and business climate in the country. As we look ahead, it is of utmost importance that we know and understand this fast changing landscape to stay relevant and grow during these trying times. Therefore, we are elated to have Mr. Snehashish Burma, founding partner of Snehashish Mahmood and Company, to provide a brief overview of the proposed budget for 2022-23. Additionally, we are honored to have with us Dr. Mohammad Abdul Rauf, Director General, Customs Intelligence and Investigation, National Board of Revenue, and Mr. Mohammad Iqbal Hussain, Tax Commissioner, Large Taxpayer Unit, National Board of Revenue, who has both kindly consented to grace our event today as the special guests. But before I introduce Snehashish Borua, I would like to call upon Mr. Tahri Naman, President of the Nordic Chamber, to deliver the welcome address and say a few words about the Chamber and its operation. Over to you, Tahri Bhai. Thank you so much, Mashur. Honorable special guests, Dr. Mohammad Abdul Rauf, DG Customs Intelligence and Investigation, NBR, Mohammad Iqbal Hussain, Tax Commissioner, Large Taxpayer Unit, NBR. Snehashish Barua and his team from Snehashish Mahmood and Company. Members of the Nordic Chamber of Commerce and Industries, a very good evening to you all. I would like to begin by welcoming our members to our annual event, the salient feature of Finance Bill 2022, presented by Snehashish Barua Bhai, founding partner of Snehashish Mahmood and Company. At the same time, I would like to thank our special guests for agreeing to grace this event with their presence. We have had a busy and very fruitful year. To name few, we hosted Nordics at 50 business promotion event as a part of the celebrations marking 50 years of Nordic Bangladesh diplomatic relationship. Moreover, we also hosted an event named FDI in logistics, which is one of our flagship events on sustainability. Bangladesh economy has shown a steady growth even during challenging times. However, as we move forward uh, past the pandemic, we notice new challenges such as the global inflationary pressure, which can have an adverse effect on the economy. As Mashur has mentioned, oil and power crisis has already led to a disruption in supply chain and subsequent increase in commodity prices. Cost of li living has also gone up. Prudent fiscal policy measures are very important and budget is the instrument which addresses these concerns. We are excited to have Sneha Shishta conduct this webinar this year as well. We have always received positive feedbacks from our members regarding this wholesome presentation. Thank you, Sneha Shish Bhai, for agreeing for presenting this event like you have always done in the past years. That being said, I would like to conclude my speech and welcome you again to our today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Tarin Bhai, for your welcome address and introduction of the Nordic Chamber. Sorry. Thank you, Tarin Bhai, for your welcome introduction and introduction to the Nordic Chamber. I want to go over the schedule of event today. Today's webinar would be split between a presentation from Snehashish Borua, followed by deliberations from our honorable special guests, 
and a moderated question and answer session. I also want to briefly introduce the house rules for the session today. Please make sure your microphone is on mute. Only the presenter and the moderator will be speaking during the first part of the session. We encourage your participation and we would appreciate if you engage in the dialog box using the chat box. You're also encouraged to ask relevant questions there, which will be placed and discussed by the presenters. For efficiency, it would be best if you can collate your questions in the chat box prior to the Q&A session. The moderator will invite you to ask the questions individually during the session. Lastly, please note that the presentation slides and documents will be shared with you by the NCCI after the session. Before starting, I want to draw our attention to our upcoming annual report and white paper on FBI and logistics sector. Additionally, please follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter to know more about the Chamber's activities. We are looking forward to hosting another dialogue focused on the power sector and ease of doing business in the near future. Furthermore, the Chamber will explore opportunities to collaborate with other relevant stakeholders to initiate dialogues regarding green growth and transition, sustainable financing and climate action. Without further ado, I want to now introduce Nehashish Borua, founding partner of Snehashish Mahmud and Company, which started its journey in 2013 as a tax, audit and consultancy service firm. Mr. Borua completed his articleship from Rahman Rahman and Haq, a member of the KPMG International Cooperative. He qualified as a chartered accountant from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Bangladesh, ICAP, in 2005, and from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales, ICA EW, in 2013. He has worked at the telecom companies TMIB and Grameen Phone. Mr. Borua is also a member of the faculty of ICAP and tutors the ICAEW advanced stage classes. He provides training services to professionals from different sectors on financial reporting and corporate governance, including the Bangladesh Bank and the National Revenue Board of Revenue staff. In addition, he's also a trainer for the Dhaka Stock Exchange Training Academy. Please welcome Mr. Snehashish Boruma, founding partner of Snehashish Mahogan Company. Dada, over to you. Thank you very much, Mashur Bhai. I believe I'm audible. Yes. Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we can see. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. And I hope you are all keeping well. And thank you very much, Mashur Bhai, for introducing me telling so much about me and also to the president and the management committee members of NCCI for inviting me here again for this year to talk about the salient features of finance bill, which has been you know, placed by our honorable finance minister back in 9th of June. And I'm really happy, Mashur Bhai, eh? honestly speaking, today we have got two special guests from NBR from whom we learn tax and VAT on a day-to-day day -day basis. So uh, like uh, Iqbal sir, whom we always bother visiting him now and then, and also by over the phone, who is handling the large taxpayer unit of Bangladesh actually, I should say. And the other, our special guest, Prof sir, he is not only, uh, I should say, a teacher, a mentor for many bad professionals in Bangladesh, who had been actively been involved in, you know, uh, running a very good, bad practices in Bangladesh. I'm really happy to see both of them joining today's discussion. And I'm also feeling like some kind of, uh, you know, a pressure, you know, in front of the trainers or teachers like them, how I'm going to present this stuff. But since you have given me the responsibility, I'll have to take you through. So this presentation, I have tried to collate through this finance bill 2022. I've also tried to look into the budget piece you know, the big speech that has been uh, 
placed in the parliament and also the statutory regulatory orders, which has been issued from 9th of June onwards. So please, I tried to collect collate information based on those documentation. Whenever you have confusions on my slides and you know your understanding, please refer to that original documentation. So if we look into current year budget, as uh, the president of NCCI has rightly mentioned, we have got a lot of challenges in this year. Perhaps we have not seen these sort of challenges even during the COVID days. So this year, the budget size has been increased by 14.2%, which is 678,000 crore for this year. And out of that, like the revenue earnings is estimated to be 433,000, which is 11.3% higher than last year. And NVR has been given a very big responsibility. Perhaps you know, out of our total collection, almost 56% or 55% are being collected through NBR. And this year, they have been given a growth target of 12%. And our budget deficit would be around 245,000 crore, which is 19% higher than last year. So you all know during this you know, uh, inflationary time, government will have to give more subsidy and will have to continue those annual development program on a time to time basis. So again, this budget deficit percentage is not like 6% what we have seen back in 2021. This is around 5.5%, which is 0.5% lower than you know the initial COVID days. And we are also estimating our GDP will continue to grow at a good rate. And we all know our Podda bridge, our dream bridge is going to be operational very soon from this June. So this GDP growth is estimated to be 7.5%, which is slightly higher than last year. And perhaps you will look into the number like the inflation has been targeted to grow by 5.6%, which is lower than last year. You all know that this budget preparation documentation happens like starts from January or February kind of stuff. So at that point in time, the inflation number was taken. At currently, if you look into the inflation number, this will not tally. But what we can see, the government has the vision to control this inflation to a great extent. So let's see the initiatives taken by the government. And also, if you look into the source and allocation of budget, on the extreme right, you will see the budget for this year, which is 433,000 crore, as I have said about the revenue collection, out of which 370,000 crore will be collected through NBR, and rest of them are non-NBR related taxes. So now, if you see here, out of these 600 uh, 78,000 total expenditure. The operating expenditure is 373,000 and the remaining expenses are development ex expenditure, which is 259,000 crore. And then we'll have the deficit. We are expecting the deficit to be 245,000. So what has happened if we compare with our last year revised budget? So you know that last year the budget size was 603,000, but this has been revised to 593,000. So now if we can see there has been no changes in NBA related tax in estimates even. Whatever has been budget, budgeted in 2021-2022, the same amount has been kept, 330,000. So now up to March, as far as the sources are concerned based on the budget space, so, so far we have seen already 68% of the total tar targeted amount has been collected up to March 2022. So we believe the government has taken enough or adequate initiative that they will be able to reach up to 300. 30,000. So what we can see from this year is like already if you look into the operating expenditure part of it, which is 185,000 crore. So the operating revenue, I should say the revenue is we can see is, is that surplus, which is 239,000. So we believe when the accounts will be closed at the end of the June. So in that case, the revenue will be close to the expenditure. The same thing has happened here, like operating expenditure budget is 373,000 and 300. 70,000 is the collection from internal sources. So which means all the development expenditure will be run through either foreign loan or domestic loan. So if you can see here in this year, the target for external financing is projected at 98,000 crore, which was 80,000 crore in last year. So we can see that the government will borrow more money from international sources. And also if you look into the local source of financing, last year the total Local borrowing was estimated at 124, which has been increased to 146,000. So it means the government has got the courage to continue their development expenditure despite all these inflationary adjustments, which is a very good thing. And we must give due credit to NBR with their limited resources. 
and with lack of digitalization on a full fledged basis. If you look into the number, then you will appreciate whatever has been done by our you know, tax colleagues who are working day and night to you know, uh, collect all those taxes. So if you see, this is the original target in this, in this column, and then the revised target was this, and then you will see that in most of the cases, the collection was close to actual amount, and then on a year by year, you will see there is a growth of 22.51%, as well as the highest growth was last year because you know in 20, 2019 and 20 we have seen a lower growth so as compared to the budget you know collection of 2019-20 we can see a higher growth in 2021 so we were almost close to the re actual you know revised collection target which was 351000 crore and we collected 328000 crore so we must give a due credit to the government official and then if i take you through the expenditure and then income part, whatever was targeted, like in 2009-10, total you know uh, expenditure was 109,000 and total collection was 75,000. So there was a gap of around 25,000. So gradually, what is happening? Whatever we are spending, be it uh, revenue expenditure or development expenditure, this is growing at a very higher rate. And we can see there is a big gap between the actual collection as well as the actual expenditure. So this is leaving a very big budget deficit and our dependency on loan and borrowing. And then on year on year basis, you can see that the curve is, is at a very steep. It is increasing at a very higher rate. So it means the government is expanding on mega projects and all those development projects where you need to put in a lot of funds, but we cannot generate that much of revenue internally. So now if you look into tax and VAT part, then you will see there is a shift at least we can see there is a change in direct tax collection target. Last year, uh, direct tax collection target was 104,000. So right now it has been increased to 121,000. In every you know, segment of the tax component, you'll see there is a raise. But what we can see, like 31.8% to 32.71%, it means there is a shift of collection of taxes. So we are getting dependent on direct tax because the rate is increasing from 31 to 32. And still our higher revenue target is coming from VAT, which is 38.16%. And if we look into the collection target as of now, this is not so bad. From uh, Again, from NBR website, I have collected this information. If we compare the collection for, from July 2021 to like April 2022 with the corresponding 10 months of last year, we can see there are sharp increase in revenue collection. And, you know, this tells you the story like how we have grown like in 2018-19 we did not have that much of collection 280,000 versus 218 and this year we had a big shortfall because uh, we did not collect adequate money but from 2020-21 onwards you can see it was 263,000 and up to april it is already 20, 227,000 so we believe there will be a positive growth in 21-22 so now I'm going to take you through my presentation on three different segments. One is I will talk about uh, on corporate income taxes, and then I will take you through VAT. And the last part would be on custom duty. So if I take you through the changes that has been proposed in the finance bill and also with the SRO they have been they have brought in, then we can see there is a very good initiative taken by the government, I should say. So now the tax rate will be reduced by two and a half percent, provided you fulfill those conditions. So you'll have to keep in mind the government is trying to make Bangladesh as business friendly as possible. And we have been advocating to NBR to reduce the rate and to make it or to standardize it as compared to our local competitors. So now the listed company, the publicly traded company, except for tobacco, insurance, bank and other specialized institutions. So they can enjoy a rate of 20 percent, not 22.5 percent. However, their, their tax rate might go up to 25 percent, which I will share in detail. So if I take you through. The conditions that have they have attached is like if you are a listed company and if your uh, shares are traded in stock exchanges, if it is in excess of 10 percent through IPO, initial public offering, then if you fulfill these two conditions, then your tax rate will be 20 percent. So it means you must your, your shares must be traded at least more than 10 percent through IPO. This will be traded through stock exchanges. So taking a step back, if you look into the listing criteria, so the listing criteria are based on a minimum percentage. So the law says you'll have to 
least at least 5% or 10%. So the law is not like in excess of 10%. So if you look into the listed company, then you will see in many of the cases, their shares are listed up to 10% to the public. So not more than 10%. And also, if you look into the condition, the condition says about IPO. So IPO is very defined. When you close your share for the first time, then you, you can call it initial public offering. But there are a lot of ways you get listed. Maybe you are listed through direct listing or maybe you are listed through uh, right share issues or repeat public offer. So there are a lot of things. So I believe these are the issues where you know um, the government need to look into because technically many of the listed company will not fulfill this condition. And then if your shares are even you know listed with stock exchanges and 10% or more than 10% are traded in the uh, stock exchanges, then still you need to fulfill two conditions. One is all receipts must come through banking channel. And another one is you cannot spend more than 12 lakhs taka in a year for your expenditure and investments. So now taking a step back on this requirement, if you see whether technically you can collect everything through banking channel or not, whether our economy is ready, whether we have got our infrastructure ready that we can collect everything through banking channel. So banking channel means it is through DD or check or DD, or it is through bank to bank transfer through EFTN or through MFS. So right at this moment, perhaps we are not fully ready to ensure that all proceeds will come through banking channel. And then the second part is there is a limit proposed 12 lakhs taka that you can spend for investments or expenditure in cash in excess of that you know, you cannot do it in order to enjoy that benefit. So if you are not complying with this thing, then your tax rate will not reduce, rather it will go up to 25%. So if you look into current section 30, then section 30 says there are certain limits, like for raw materials, you can, uh, you know, pay for raw materials for 5 lakh taka as cash. For salary, you can spend 20,000 taka as cash. And for other payments, there is a ceiling of 50,000 taka in section 30. So since there is a provision for payment in section 30, so bringing this provision, this kind of provision will contradict. And I believe the government is working to revise this proposition because otherwise, like big company or small company, a cap of 12 lakh will be nothing for them. And then if you are not a listed company, if you're a private company or a public company whose shares are not being traded, then your rate might go down from 30% to 27.5%. If you are an association of person, artificial juridical person, or one person company, your rate will go down by two and a half percent, provided you fulfill those two conditions. So I'm not going to repeat those conditions again. And then this is one of the area where all the industries had been proposing, like you'll have to have uniform tax rate for all exporter, not only for the governments. I know there are some good RMG companies here. So now. If you look into the RMG, then there are two rates. One is 10% if you are a green factory. And if you are not a green factory, the rate will be 12%. So now, even if it is not a government, whatever items you export, your rate will be 10% or 12%, depending on the conditions they have mentioned. So you must have ETI and you must follow the provision of ITU. And also you must comply with the environmental requirements. So now this provision for other than RMG will be there until 30th June 2028. So this is definitely a good move. So what I try to do since Iqbal Sar is here, I try to extrapolate some information like if you are a 100% export oriented company, if your income was 20 crore last year. So now last up to last year, there was a provision that you can claim 50% as export export rebate. So your income will go down to 100 million instead of 200 million. So now if you get the state of 20%, so you are supposed to pay 20 million as taxes for based on this current law. So now, if you are not a green factory, then your tax rate will be, your tax charge will go up by you know uh, four million taka. It will not be twenty million. So you need to ensure that you are a green factory for other than governments too. And then we had been talking about RMG itself. We had not been talking about this backward linkages industry because every year you see the government extends the date for them because they enjoy a rate of fifteen percent. So I can see that you can have a better planning opportunities because this 15% tax rate for the RMG backward industries, especially for the textile, for the spinning and other industries, this rate will be valid for until 2020 to 2025. And they will also have to comply with the provisions. So this is undoubtedly a very good proposition by the government. And then tax benefit on special 
uh, uh, recruitment. We all know that we have specific provisions for the tra transgender em employees and also employment of physically challenged people. So earlier the condition was too much because we'll have to employ 100 employees of those nature, uh, specialized people or like uh, transgender employees. So now the condition has been uh, reduced to 25 employees minimum. I still believe this is very challenging to find out 25 people of those kinds. And then another good thing that has been proposed in this finance bill is tax exemption on Bangladeshi flag carrier ocean going ship. So now if you are a Bangladeshi flag carrier, you know, uh, owning a, a vessel like that, then your business income through foreign currency will be exempted from payment of taxes. So again, you will have to ensure that you are bringing foreign currency in Bangladesh. And this will also give us a very big at least boost for our currency reserve. We all know we are running through trade deficit of 27 billion. And nowadays, many people are talking about this accelerated freight cost. So if Bangladeshi owners own these kind of ships, then we can save a lot of freight cost indeed. So this will increase our reserve too. And then if you are a banking company, then you will see that your tax rate is going to go up because the finance bill is proposing when you used to claim special reserve as an admissible expenses. So this finance bill is proposing that this special reserve will not be considered as admissible, rather it will be considered as an inadmissible expenses. So now if it is considered as an inadmissible expenses, your, your tax rate will not be 37.5, rather it will go up to 39.06%. So special reserve is created based on central bank requirement and central bank is part of the government. And this is just to protect the interest of the depositors. You need to keep the reserve because if the bank or NBFI falls down, then this reserve will protect the interest of the beneficiaries. So a company, a banking company or a non-banking financial institution need to allocate 5% of their, uh, you know, profit to this, uh, you know, special reserve account. And then one of the key challenges that has been proposed in the finance bill is contribution to WBPF. So in existing cases, what we have seen in many occasions, this was considered as an allowable expenses because you know uh, through our level law 2006, a company is required to pay 5% of their pr uh, profit to the eligible beneficiaries. So now the proposition is coming that you cannot consider this as an allowable expenses. So if we look into the budget space, if we look at the budget space, the finance minister said as per ba Bangladesh Level Act 2006, provision is there to make contribution to WPPF and this is payable from the after tax profit of a company. So this is uh, this is not a correct statement because this is not paid from after tax profit of a company. This is actually paid or payable from the profit before tax. If you look into section 119 of the company act, it says very clearly that uh, except for taxes, everything will come under PBT. So only tax is the item which should not be covered before, uh, you know, after PBT. So this is not payable from the uh, PAT, rather this is paid or payable from the P PBT. And this is not a discretionary payment. This is a compulsion for the company. And, and sec uh, Section 20, 244 of the Act says it is an allowable expenditure or is a kormukta ai for the employer. And also out of this 5%, you need to pay 10% uh, of this 5% to the government. So I'm paying to the government and again, I'm paying taxes on that thing. And also, if you look into the uh, exemption kind of conditions, earlier it was exempt and later uh, the exemption limit has been reduced to 50,000. It means whoever is earning this WPPF or getting this WPPF, they'll have to pay hefty amount of taxes on the remaining amount. So it is taxed on the part of the individuals or beneficiary. And there is a very good news for Park Visit. We all know that we don't want to pay tax on Park Visit. It is a tax on a tax. But that is not the case. So this year, uh, the park visit limit has been increased from 5,50 to 1 million, which is definitely a very big change for the corporate taxpayer. And this will technically reduce your effective tax rate. And I know there are a lot of Nordic companies who are working in this special sector, especially in ITS. And some of the company has started making investment in Beza and other you know, uh, preferred zone. So now we all know that they don't need to pay taxes for certain years, for 10 years or 15 years. So now the law is proposing if you do not submit your tax return, if you do not comply with withholding tax requirement, and if you do not bring all your uh, receipts, sales proceeds through banking channel, you will not be entitled to this tax exemption. 
So this is one of the critical change that has been proposed. If we look into VAT kind of VAT law, then you will see in this Bangla word, it says if you are uh, rendering or supplying goods at, uh, on exemption basis, if these are exempted, and if you do not fulfill the conditions of books and records or other non-compliances, then they will not revoke your exemption. So this is the same authority and we are under them. They have got tax and VAT. So that is saying if you do not comply with all those books and records related requirement, then they will not waive or revoke your exemption. But in income tax, we are proposing that this will be revoked. In my personal opinion, I believe if you are doing some mistakes, you can penalize them, but you cannot make a capital punishment of withdrawal of tax exemption. So because all of a sudden you cannot make all the all these things happening, especially from the receipt part of it. And then we had been talking about R&D in Bangladesh, and this is not happening to that extent because if you had been spending on R&D, this was not considered as an allowable expenditure. You will see, you look into the graph, then you will see Bangladesh is probably at the very bottom, like except for Sri Lanka, our spending on R&D to GDP is 0.3%. That's why we cannot make or promote country like Bangladesh as made in Bangladesh recently. So now this R&D definition has been defined. So now you can claim certain R&D expenses as an allowable expenses. So I believe the industries will come forward and invest in research and we'll see a lot of Bangladeshi products being made available across the globe. And then perhaps you will see a lot of creativities in this finance bill. This is one of them. We had been talking about the startup and we had not been promoting this startup to that extent. So now uh, a new provision has been brought in in our income tax ordinance on a startup sandbox and there are certain conditions being given. So one of the critical condition is like you cannot be a subsidiary of a foreign company. You cannot form the company through amalgamation or demerger. You must deploy commercialization of new product, creativity or something like that. And the turnover cannot exceed 100 crore. So what I have seen is like this sort of uh, provision will, will give benefit to this startup. So what are the benefits for the startup? They don't need to worry about this tax deduction at source and paying taxes on that inadmissible expenses. And then they can carry forward their loss for nine years and they don't need to pay 0.6% as taxes. Rather, they will pay 0.1% as taxes. They don't need to file all those monthly, quarterly, half yearly return, but they need to register with NBR by 30th June. And they have a growth period of five years. So this will be applicable for the new startup. And for all those old startup, which was incorporated after 17, 18, they will also get this benefit for next three years, but you need to register yourself immediately. So one of the critical conditions that you will see that you cannot be a subsidiary of a foreign company. So what we are saying, many of the startup that we see, they have formed the company. The holding company is based on Silicon Valley or Singapore or Hong Kong, because it is easier for them to raise the fund from Hong Kong, Singapore or from Silicon Valley. But if it is a Bangladeshi owned company, it's difficult to raise the fund. So I believe this is one of the bottleneck that has been created through this law. But overall, we, we can see a new arena is coming up and this will definitely promote our creative people. And for last six to seven years, we have been talking about amalgamation and related provision. So this year, a specific provision has been brought in for amalgamation and the condition for amalgamating company and the amalgamated company has been relaxed. So now if you are a 75% shareholder of the new company or amalgamated company, this will be considered as amalgamation. So what are, and even this will cater a subsidiary of foreign company and as well as the local company. Although we know in Company Act, we do not have provision of amalgamating with foreign company, only the provision for local company exists. So now this is like forward looking and we must appreciate that thing. And perhaps you know the Company Act 1994 is being amended or the provision is going to, you know, new provisions are going to come into place. And what are the benefits of this amalgamation? So if the transaction is happening to shares, it's a share exchange, then there will be no capital gain tax. And then if the consideration is other than share, then that will be subject to capital gain tax. And the amalgamating company losses can be adjusted with the amalgamated company. And if the amalgamating company has unabsorbed depreciation, they can also you know, utilize that benefit. This is already I have talked. And we have also done a small kind of research where we can see the provision that has been incorporated in our finance bill is quite standardized with international practices or our neighboring country practices. And this is one of the rule that has been proposed through this uh, new SRO, you know, in our finance through Finance Bill 2022. So perhaps you know, back in 2018, 
there was a significant change made in section 18 to C, where say like if you are a Bangladeshi company and this is TT, TNT Singapore is your uh, immediate holding company, but the ultimate holding company was TNT Inc. So if TNT Inc is going to sell their share in TNT Singapore to rig in USA, so it was subject to tax in Bangladesh. Cap, you know, they'll have to pay tax for the uh, transferring the uh, shares of you know TNT Singapore, which has substantial assets in TNT in Bangladesh. So, but unfortunately, there was no rules in our income tax rules. So now, through this new SRO, the new rules have been proposed, and I should say, and they have given a detailed valuation related standard and how and and what situation you'll have to calculate this capital gain tax. So I believe this is one of the good things that has been proposed to this uh, new rule. And then for the industries who are in working in banking industry, I, I am not so sure about uh, NCCI investment because so far I know there are no banks, so this will not be that much affecting for them. But this is very important. Many uh, startup companies, they start operating in Bangladesh and do some kind of expenses in Bangladesh, and some of them are pre-incorporation expenditures. Previously, this was not allowed as an allowable expenditure, so now you can claim this as an allowable expenses for five years on a straight line basis. Definitely a very uh, encouraging step for the entrepreneur. And then another good change in TDS is like we have seen ups and downs in TDS. So now at least the rate has been rationalized for supply of raw material to industrial undertaking. So previously the highest rate was 7%. This has been reduced to 4%. And if you are supplying finished goods, so in that case, uh, it, the tax rate would be TDS rate would be 5%. So this will definitely give a big relief to those uh, suppliers of raw materials. And I could have talked about a lot of things about TDS. So I've given a summary on where it has been changes in TDS. So like in section 52 AA, you had like 14 different sections where you need to calculate whether the amount exceeds 25 lakh taka or not. Now you don't need to calculate uh, any uh, ups and downs. So now there is no base rate, whatever you do either you'll have to deduct tax at the rate of 10 percent or one or two or three percent on the respective areas and for the transportation service if you are doing car rental or kind of thing your tds rate will go up and then if you are making internet service payment then previously it was there was no existing rate and then it has been very specified and then for remitting payment for bandwidth uh, tax deduction has been reduced from 20 to 10 percent and tds on bank interest will go up by 20 percent and this rate will go up by 50% higher in some cases if you cannot prove if you cannot submit the proof of your tax return submission copy and tax at source on garments that has been increased or our export i should not say garments garments or non garments it was 0.5% so this will be increased to directly 1% which is 100% higher than the last year and most importantly the income tax ordinance has given a definition on export which will give more clarity for export oriented company and if you look into the number i have done some kind of research so these are all information from listed company abc def and ghi so their revenue was this much their pbt was this much and their margin and pbt on revenue was 1.1 3.4 3.47 so i tried to look into so like if they have earned 32 million as 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 profit so they were supposed to pay tax at four taka, four million taka. But because there is a, there will be a one percent tax on at source, so their TDS will be twenty nine because this is final discharge of tax liability. So your income is thirty two, your tax liabilities is tax liabilities are twenty nine. So it means your effective tax rate will be ninety one percent. For this company, it will be twenty nine percent, and for this company, it will be twenty eight percent. Although you know, for garments, our effective our tax rate is either ten percent or twelve percent. So this Reduction of rate will not be beneficial unless this TDS is, you know, uh, made higher. And this is one of the fundamental change that you will see that if you are not complying with the withholding tax provision, even if you are working as an employee, you might be penalized not exceeding taka 1 million. So person who is approving the payment. So I believe you will have to take some kind of personal insurance. Otherwise, you will have to pay from your own pocket if you are not complying with the law. And then if tax official visits your place for tax deduction at source verification purpose, they can ask for information, places, accounts and activities. They can ask for your technology, be it SAP, Oracle, whatever technology you use. They can extract data, image and any input. And if you are not 
helping them out, if you are obstructing them in performing their activities, then they might impose you a penalty of 5 million taka. So be careful because you'll have to cooperate. And you all know that the government has planned to move to digital system. We call it ETDS. So try to align with that so that you can avoid these sort of penalties. And then we had a lot of issues with our reporting. Now, uh, Rule 21, which is required to be submitted on a monthly basis. So now this Rule 21 has been aligned with 108. So if you make a summary of all Rule 21, then you will get one specific report called 108, which will make your life easier. And if you are, if you do maintain provident fund, gratuity fund, and pension or superannuation fund, please make sure you are getting it approved from NBR. If it is not approved from NBR, you'll have to file tax return on tax day. And we all talk about digital company. So this digital company will now be required to file tax return in Bangladesh. Earlier it was exempt. And most, one of the most uh, important change, I should say, in terms of harassment that has been reduced through this finance bill is like, we all know that once the audit is being done, then another authority called AG would come and ask that we will further re-audit it. So now, through this new provision, the AG people will not audit it further and they have got no right to ask for any explanation or audit. So this will make our corporate's life easier. And perhaps you can see that these people is turning out the lights. He cannot turn out the lights, rather he turned on the candle. So now if you are not paying your taxes on time, and then if you are not responding to their you know, notices, they might disconnect your you know, utility connections. So what do you need to do? They will not do this thing. And until and unless like if they are serving a notice, make sure you are visiting the tax office or your representatives are going. And if you have a disputed tax, file an appeal. If you are not happy with the appeal, go to the tribunal or high court. So if you follow all the legal procedure, they will never disconnect. So if you are not following the legal course of action and provision is there to disconnect your utility connection. And one of the critical thing that is coming to you is like earlier you used to collect 18 uh, Acknowledge 18 copy. Now 18 acknowledge 18 copy will not be enough. You will have to collect proof of return submission, like that they have submitted the tax return. This will definitely give a big boost in our tax return filing. You all know we have more than 7 million as 18 holder, but only 2.5 million people are filing tax return. So this sort of initiative will ensure that all these people are filing tax return. So this will also give some administrative burden to you because you will have to collect. Uh, proof of return submission instead of 18. We all know what are the challenges. We need to deploy additional people and resources to collect all this information. So now you'll have to deploy additional people and time to collect all these proof related things. So what we had been proposing, instead of doing all this mini manual thing, we could have developed a system and means NBR where the respective authority will upload that this ETN holder has submitted the tax return. And as an individual, we can search in the website we can make a search and then we can see that these have, they have filed it. So in that case, we can remove all this barrier or bottleneck through digitization. And also what will happen like now if you visit any office, you can see their ETN displayed in the front desk or in the reception. So now instead of uh, ETN, you will have to display the proof of return submission. And in most cases in proof of return submission, you will see that how much you have paid as taxes, what was your income will be disclosed to all the people. If a supplier is coming, they will see your profit. If your internal people are coming, they will see your profit and taxes. So this will breach your confidential information. So I believe we need to look into this matter. And if you are not complying with those provision, there was uh, no uh, definite penalty. So now the penalty would be not exceeding Taka 1 million if you are not performing all those activities. And if we look into the personal tax matter, we do not see any fundamental change in terms of reduction because we are, we are all looking into like what relief we are going to get in these unabated inflationary uh, trends, I should say, because inflation is eating up all our money. So now uh, we used to collect, calculate our investment tax credit on 25% of our total income and based on 15 lakh uh, criteria, we used to decide whether we'll apply 10% or 15%. So now this has been made flat. So you don't need to calculate 10% anymore. You will get 15% as tax rebate, but the base has been reduced from 25% to 20%. So the people with mid-level income will get lower benefit and high-level income will get more benefit. 
So I have tried to do some calculation. A people having taxable income of six lakh earlier is. Uh, net tax liability was 2500 and because of this reduction of investment tax credit, he will have to pay 7000 as taxes. So his tax burden, his or her tax burden will go up by five and a half thousand or four and a half thousand. But for the higher income group, you know, they'll have they will see the incentive coming in. So earlier net tax liability was 245000 because of this increase in uh, rate from 10 to 15 percent, they will get they'll have to pay 235000. So it means 10,000 lower as compared to last year. And we all know there are a lot of people who have got like global passport. I should say like duplicate uh, dual passport or triple passport. So now in most of the cases we do not report our foreign assets in Bangladesh tax return. So now the law is law has been made very, very clear. Earlier it was there, but now it has been more clarified. If you have assets in America, UK or any, anywhere in the world, you will have to declare this in your Bangladesh tax return. It is mandatory for tax residents in Bangladesh. Now, this has given another proposition. Like, if you have got undisclosed property outside, so now if you disclose it this year, you'll have to pay taxes. So now there are possibilities that if you disclose it, then the authority can go back and reopen the file for last year. So an amnesty has been given for legal or illegal whatever property you have acquired overseas. So now, if those property, if you do not bring into Bangladesh, if those are immovable property, you'll have to pay 15% as taxes. If these are movable property, you'll have to 10%. You don't need to bring all the money to Bangladesh because if you bring the money, then you will get a reduced tax rate of 7%. If you do not bring the money into Bangladesh, you'll have to pay 10% taxes on those movable property. And then previously, if you are getting some kind of gift or loan, I should say, uh, if you are the childs are giving to uh, parents, uh, either father or mother, it was taxable. If parents are giving loan or gift to son or daughter, that was exempt. Now the provision has been made. It is like two way flow. The kids can give loan or gift to parents. The parents can give it to the kids. So it will not be taxable any longer. I think this is very, very important. So those are related to direct tax. There were a lot of changes, but I tried to bring in the key changes for you. So I'm quickly moving into indirect tax part. And at the very outset, I would like to thank the NBR officials because a lot of changes have been made and these are so, so business friendly. I should say in a in lot of areas where we had been struggling with clarification, imposition, and these all have been catered through this finance bill 2022. So one of them is like input for traders. Previously, the traders, you know, uh, if you go by the interpretations of the law, they cannot claim the service related input they have taken in their you know, uh, credit mechanism. So now if you are a trader, if you take services from any party, if it is an input, then you can claim input tax rebate. This will definitely reduce cost of your doing business. And also this has been aligned with our previous act. In previous act, it was there, but when the new law was brought in, it was not there. And for VAT registration, so now the liaison officers and branch officers, they must obtain VAT registration as well as if you are a non-resident, the VAT agent will have to be registered. And if you are an eSIM provider, you will have to be registered. The most important is like if you are an exempted oriented and for only for space uh, renting, like you, space dental kind of thing, you don't need to obtain VAT registration. This has been excluded from the general order. And there was lack of clarity in central VAT registration. We all know there are some challenges in terms of doing VAT audit. Because every time we are doing the you know VAT audit, then we are facing audit from many different authority. So the most important changes that has happened, like the definition of uh, identical and similar goods, has been clarified, which is very very good in terms of acceptability. Earlier it was not so clear what will be considered as similar goods. So now they have gone by the industry. We know there are still some challenges in the definition, but it is a very good step to start with. And previously. If you have got only one factory, you cannot uh, avail the central VAT registration if you have got multiple depot. So now, if, if, even if you have got one single factory and you have got multiple depot, you will be able to claim VAT rate, uh, you know, central VAT registration. And previously, if you are a reduced rate VAT payer, you cannot obtain VAT registration. Now you can do this, you know, VAT registration in a simpler way. So I believe there are some challenges from practical point of view, but again, this is a very welcome initiative. And 
if you are exempt at manufacturing stage, but if you have got depot from where you are supplying, so you'll have to pay trade VAT. You cannot claim the exemptions from the trading stage. So still you can obtain the central VAT registration. And there are some clarity have been made in, in, in our section 46, which relates to input tax credit. So one of them is intra-company transaction without payment, payment through banking channel can avail uh, input tax credit. Previously, if you are following the unit VAT registration, if you transfer goods from one unit to another unit, you had to remit the payment through banking channel. So that condition has been waived and you can pay uh, money through MFS, mobile financial services, which will facilitate the transaction. And also, if your goods are lying at contract manufacturer price, still you can claim VAT rebate, which is also uh, which will also is the doing business in Bangladesh. And then so now we are paying through Bcash, Nogoth and other MFS services. So now you can claim rebate even if you are paying through those MFS. And then uh, in last year, there was a law like if your sales is lower than your purchase price, then entire rebate will be cancelled. So now they are saying no, entire rebate will not be cancelled. Only the amount that has decreased proportionate to that amount, rebate will be cancelled. So this is again a very good initiative because we all know that we need to sometimes sell our product at a discounted rate, even at the lower rate than we purchased. And then for partial input tax credit, if you are supplying goods at standard rate and exempted goods, earlier you had to proportion this and that was very, very difficult. So now they are, what law is proposing, you claim the entire amount as rebate and then for the exempted goods that you have sold on proportionate basis, you increase the amount by way of increasing adjustment for those rebate that you are not entitled to. So this will make our presentation in Mushok 9.1 far clearer. And previously the law was you cannot receive any supply from unregistered person and also you cannot make payment to them. And this was not business because sometimes we need to purchase from unregistered person. So now the law has made it clear that you can buy it from unregistered person, but you'll have to pay the VAT from your own. But again, we can see there is a difference in our SRO or the VAT deduction at source, which is SRO 163 or something. There, the provision is still there. So we need to align the SRO with the original section. And then we all know Bangladesh is a tax and TDS and VDS prone country. So there are some changes proposed in VDS rules. So there will be no VDS applicable for supply of goods as per third schedule, which are at less than standard rate. For furniture manufacturer, if they are uh, attested, you know, the, if their uh, 6.3 is attested by the authority, and then if they are issuing the VAT chalan at 15%, there will be no VAT deduction at source. And also, if you are buying something from the super shop, make sure your name, your bean are, post, are, are, are captured there, then you don't need to deduct VAT from those uh, supply through EFD. But the most important is like, if you are buying from a trader, from a trader, which we call like procurement provider, so now, previously, if the trader was supplying goods at 15%, then as per the VDS SRO, you don't need to deduct. So now the SRO is saying you'll have to deduct VAT at 15%, even if they are supplying at uh, at standard rate. And then there are uniform VAT rate has been proposed for restaurants, which is 5%. And there are some changes made, and these are very, very significant. I should say and business friendly as well. So number one is you need to like pay the VAT within 15 days of making payment. So it means every day you'll have to keep a people to comply with the law to deposit the VAT. So now the law is saying, no, you deposit it is it, uh, seven days at end of the tax period. Means if you are completing the month of June, then you need to deposit all the VAT by 7th of July. So you account for everything and make the deposit through one transaction. This is more more business friendly. And then if you are supplying to any withholding authority, then previously you could have obtain this 6.6 adjustment or decreasing adjustment within the same tax period and the tax period, which is two tax period. So now you can claim the decreasing adjustment within the same tax period and next three tax period, which is four months. Again, this is very good initiative because in most of the cases, it is difficult to collect all those VDS certificates. So this will give extra time for the business. And software development and customization has been excluded from ITS definition, which means it will be variable at the rate of 15%. And we all know that in our income tax, we have got definite time for making an assessment like two years or like uh, six months from the end of the assessment year. We know there is a definite time, but in section 73, there was no definite time for completing the show cause and all this procedure. So now you'll have to 
the commissioner or the authority under the commissioner will have to complete the assessment within 120 days, which will make our life at least easier because we know there is a definite date. And then for non submission of VAT return, there was a penalty of 10,000 taka. So now the penalty has been reduced to 5,000. And during these COVID days, we have seen a lot of shops were closed and they could not deposit or file their VAT return on time. So if you are temporarily closed, the authority will not charge you penalty uh, for filing, non filing the VAT return. And then previously for non compliances, so there was a provision of uh, charging like penalty in, in the new act when it was proposed, it was 200%. And last year we have seen this was reduced to 100%. So now uh, you cannot be charged as a penalty like minimum 50% or maximum 100%. So we can see that at least this has been rationalized to that extent. And in many occasions I have handled VAT audit at, at commissioner at intelligence or CIC. And in almost all the occasions I have seen when they start the audit, it takes after five years. And in many occasions, the principal amount is lower than the total interest. The interest exceeds the principal amount. So the law is proposing it cannot be more than 24 months. And we all know that we need to pay simple interest at the rate of 1%. So this is undoubtedly very good for the businesses. And then if it is not a non-compliance on books and records or other issues, then the authority can penalize you by 100,000, they will not revoke your exemption. And then if you are not complying with the notices of VAT authority, like income tax, the VAT authority have got the same power to disconnect your utility connection. So try to comply with the law. And I know all the Nordic companies I work with and I'm associated with, we are all very supportive and very compliant if it comes as compliance with law and regulations. And then previously, when you are moving to a, for, a, for any dispute, you are moving to appellate commissioner or appellate tribunal or high court, then there you need to pay 20% disputed tax on disputed tax and penalty. So now the law is saying you don't need to pay anything on penalty. You only pay 20% on the disputed tax or 10% on the disputed tax. And previously, when you filed an appeal to the appellate tribunal, you had time of like 90 days. And if you forget to file within 90 days or if you cannot file it, there was no uh, condonation time. So now, there is a condonation time of 60 days. So you can file it appeal uh, to the tribunal 90 plus 60 days. Contract manufacturer. This is one of the important change that has been proposed in this finance bill. Is like, as far as the law is concerned, you had to bring all these materials to your place and then you send it to the contract manufacturer. And then contract manufacturer after finishing, they had to send it to you or to the dealer. So the, now the law is proposing, you can directly ship the product from port to your contract manufacturer. You don't need to bring the goods to your factory. Again, a fantastic change from VAT point of view. And then uh, we all know that we have some certain uh, construction company or development partner. And then in that case, they used to enjoy this as deemed export because if it is done through international tender, through bio of LC and through foreign currency. So now on top of LC, uh, the agreement, agreement, agreement between the parties will be considered as uh, you know, equally applicable. So you don't need to uh, get the award through LC, rather an agreement will be enough to be considered as a deemed export. Again, this will ease the regulations for the deemed exporters. And then previously, if you are going to file VAT return, and then if you are planning that you cannot file the VAT return for the month of June by 15th of July. So previously you had to apply this uh, at least seven days before the tax period, means 23rd of June. So now you can apply to the commissioner on 7th of July, not 23rd June. So this is much more business friendly, I should say. And VAT imposition on wholesale and trader. Previously, the trader need to pay, needed to pay 5% VAT. So for now, all those paper and fabric related uh, trader, they need to pay only 1.5% VAT. And there are certain conditions attached to it. And for general order, so previously, if you are going to approve approve your software, you had to run it through the commissioner to NBR. So now you don't need to go to the commissioner. You can go directly go to VAT implementation department of NBR. And also, please keep in mind, if you are going to avail the central VAT registration, you will have to apply within 31st December 2022. Don't forget that. And central registration will ease a lot of your business processes. And then for those companies who are working in this uh, mobile phone manufacturing, currently, 
a manufacturer pays VAT. I have given an example of 5%. And then if they are selling it to the national distributor and then divisional distributor and then retailer from where we are buying. So now if you look into current position, only the VAT was there 5% at manufacturing stage. So there was no bad at this stage. With this new enactment in SRO 163, then you will have VAT responsibility in every case. So the not only the manufacturer, the distributor, whatever cascade they have got, all of them will have to pay the VAT. And refrigerator will be very costly, at least costly by 5% because uh, the, uh, the exemption has been withdrawn at manufacturing stage. And then we all are promoting made in Bangladesh. So this is another wonderful initiative we have seen in income tax. Last year they have proposed. So now if you are a motor car manufacturer up to 2500 CC, so if the total car body is built in manufacturer owned premises, so there is no VAT. And there are partial VAT of 5% if car chases and other accessories are imported. And fully VAT and SD exemption on import of raw materials. So if you are bringing any raw materials, you don't need to pay any VAT or SD. And also for active pharmaceutical ingredients, no VAT at local manufacturing, uh, manufacturing stage. You don't need to pay even AT at import or purchase of uh, raw materials. And then if you are manufacturing interactive dis display, mobile phone charger, mobile phone battery, you don't need to pay any VAT at manufacturing stage. So if you are producing these, uh, I should say batteries, uh, batteries, so these special batteries, which does not require any kind of charge or kind of thing, maintenance free battery we call. So this uh, production of uh, this kind of batteries will be exempted from payment of VAT till 30th June 2025. So this will undoubtedly promote made in Bangladesh kind of thing. And then in government, we had been facing these kind of issues because when the governments cannot run everything on their own, they subcontracted. So when they are subcontracting it, then there was a, a VAT deduction at source. So now if both the garment manufacturer and the subcontracting factory, if they are under bonded facilities and if they are registered with their respective commissionerate, then they can you know, uh, make it VAT free, means there will be no VAT on this subcontracting, but you must fulfill all these conditions. And then if VAT authority goes to you and then sees their documents, then they needed to submit the report within 15 days. And we have seen a lot of disputes happening because within 15 days you cannot file a demand. So now they will get additional 15 days. So I'm done with uh, VAT. So on custom duty, there are not significant changes. So what I can see is like there are two new sections has been added that you can run your uh, bonded warehouse operations electronically. So once we will find the new notification, how these electronic process will happen, then we'll see more benefit coming to these importers. And we all believe that digitization is the only way that we can we can give a better picture picture to our FDI you know, counterparts. And then we all know there are a lot of uh, private, uh, I should say airliners or shippers coming to Bangladesh and they all know all the confidential information about the passengers. So they'll have to keep all this information confidential. And if you are not complying with these kind of uh, provisions of the Customs Act, the penalty was 50,000 and this has been increased to 200,000. So I know I have taken much of your time. Uh, thank you very much for your patience hearing. It is not so easy to draw attention at this level, but I tried to be as brief as possible. Thank you. And um, over to you, Mashur Bhai. I'm sorry for uh, taking a hell lot of time. Eh? Nana, Nana, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to do this for us. Um, we are grateful to you. So thank you, Snashishda, for your erudite presentation. We are truly humbled that you have kindly consented to be present at the budget updates, uh, to present the budget updates with our members at the NCCI. I'm confident that all the participants have learned greatly from your presentation. Um, before we begin the question and answer session, I would like to hear from, we would like to hear from our special guests today. Dr. Abdul Rauf, um, sir, and Mohammad Iqbal Hussain, sir, from the NBR. At the same time, I would request our participants to kindly think of the questions you want to ask both uh, Dada and our special guests. And if you can uh, write that in the chat box, that would be very helpful. Once we hear from them, we will open the question and answer session. So it is my pleasure to invite Dr. Mohammad Abdul Rauf, Director General, Customs Intelligence and Investigation, National Board of Revenue, 
who has kindly consented to be the special guest today to deliver his address. I'm sure we are all eagerly waiting to hear from him. Abdurraf sir, over to you. Sir, are you there? Mashur bhai, can you hear me? So yes, I can. Uh, 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 Rof sir happened to be the DG at Customs Intelligence, so he has recently been transferred to VAT Intelligence, okay. VAT Audit and Intelligence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I will update this. Sorry about that. <laughs> VAT Intelligence Unit, uh, Doctor Abdul Rof. Uh, let me. I think sir is not present at the moment. Uh, but I think Iqbal sir is present. Uh, or let me try to. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm present. Sir, sir uh, so can I request, sir, uh, you to kindly uh, deliver your deliberations instead, sir? If you'd be kind sure. enough. Sure. Uh, so I would sir, like to. Sir, uh, if yeah. I can introduce you briefly. Uh, yes, you can. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sir, I would request Mr. Mohammed Iqbal Hassan, Tax Commissioner, Large Taxpayers Unit, LTU, National Board of Revenue, to kindly say a few words before we begin our next session. Sir, over to you. Uh, I, uh, firstly, I would like to uh, thank you all uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to present here. And uh, as Always, Mr. Snashish uh, presented a very quality session for us. And for Nordic Chamber, uh, this is really a great opportunity for me uh, to say a few words about uh, the proposed changes uh, through the budgetary process. As uh, actually, uh, you all know that uh, we are now in a very tough time at the end of June because of our uh, last days. We are counting our last days for this current fiscal years and uh, LTU, LTU is uh, under tremendous pressure for achieving its target. Still uh, then uh, I, uh, I, I pay, I tried to pay my attention to what Mr. Snash is deliver about the budgetary changes budgetary changes actually uh, i could not uh, uh, i could not uh, study in depth about uh, the uh, bill finance bill and uh, the proposed change through sros i learned more from uh, mr snash's deliberation and as you all know that uh, the, in every year, the, uh, there are some changes always happens through the Finance uh, Act. This year, uh, we have seen uh, many changes regarding our tax uh, rate, our enforcement, and uh, particularly profit sh shifting through uh, offshore uh, indirect through uh, to combat the profit shifting and money laundering, uh, there are several changes proposed through uh, finance bill. And there are also some adjustment and one uh, is very uh, unique changes that uh, has been pro proposed. This is called startup sandbox. And we, as you all know that we are heading towards a modern uh, tax system and still we have uh, we have uh, long way to go, but still we are trying. In this, through the finance bill, finance bill, uh, NBR is trying to uh, enhance the compliance from the part of the SSC, and that's why uh, the uh, uh, one is acknowledgement slip plays is going to play an important role. Once uh, uh, it was enough for an SSC to submit a uh, tax clearance certificate or TN certificate, but from the coming fiscal year, 
and SEC uh, must uh, uh, present his acknowledgement slip in order to get some services from different department. And uh, yes, some adjustment as Snatchish said, uh, in case of tax rebate, uh, tax rebate, uh, the complexity is reduced through the proposed proposed changes. And uh, uh, there are also changes uh, as far as uh, 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 export rebate is concerned. Uh, we, NBR is trying to uh, make a simple a simple process to uh, provide benefits to the exporters. But uh, as you know, in the presence of Section 82C, it is very uh, uh, critical to make the whole arrangement very simple. And uh, in the presence of provision of Section 82C, that is alternate minimum tax, uh, uh, we could not, uh, we could not uh, uh, able to make justified tax uh, tax system in everywhere and uh, you because of the complexity to uh, to uh, make a, a, an assessment because of the SSCs, particularly the, our uh, some of our co companies uh, companies uh, th those who try to avoid tax and it is a very uh, very difficult for us to uh, assist uh, tax in a just uh, properly. So that's why, that's why uh, the, the, there are uh, there are uh, some uh, some uh, method we apply. Uh, uh, for example, alternate uh, minimum tax, uh, uh, minimum tax on the basis of turnover, alternate minimum tax. Uh, uh, alternate minimum tax uh, in case of uh, tax deducted at source. These are the measures, but still we we are trying to make changes and to import the modern concepts of taxation uh, ta taxation law. We try to uh, import and we try to practice as you can see the changes through the rules partic in particular. So uh, primarily, this is uh, my initial uh, initial uh, deliberation. Now, if any question, uh, if anybody uh, ask me any question, I will try to answer. Uh, at the same time, I would like to say that uh, uh, the uh, what I ha I I have uh, given very uh, very uh, uh, little attention to the whole matter because uh, at the time of here, hearing your session, I had to do a lot of things also. But still, then I will try. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule to be present with us today. We are elated to have you presented this discussion. Um, so I would uh, try to see if uh, we can have uh, Dr. Abdul Rof, sir present. Uh, I tried calling him. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get through. Uh, Abdurraf, sir, are you available, sir? I, I, I think uh, we do not have sir at the moment. I'll keep on trying to uh, reach him. But in the meantime, I think we can go to the question and answer session, at least to the first one. Uh, I have a question from Rahul. Rahul, are you still there? If you are, then uh, can I please request you to please ask your question? Sure, thanks, Ma Mashur Bhai. Uh, uh, I am actually, you know, really pleased to be part of this discussion. And as al also mentioned by other panelists uh, on the call, uh, this was really very insightful. Uh, so kudos to Mr. Snehishis, as always. Uh, uh, what I wanted to check are a couple of uh, queries and maybe anyone uh, uh, from the tax department or Mr. Sneashish, whosoever has some insights or inputs on this can help me with this. Uh, you know, as part of the proposals, I also understand that it has been proposed that non-resident companies of the likes like Google, Facebook, who are operating within the country, they are to 
do a tax filing uh, in the country. Uh, so they need to file a tax return. Uh, what what uh, uh, we wanted also to check, there are companies which are, you know, supplying goods from outside Bangladesh uh, to companies within uh, Bangladesh. <coughs> Would do, and and you know in some sense or the other they are actually doing business from Bangladesh. Will those companies also get covered as part of this proposal, or is it only covering digital companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, uh, etc.? That that was my first question. Iqbal, sir, can answer the uh, Sir. I, I don't know if the question regarding the direct taxation or the VAT, but, nah, but uh, as far as income can... tax is concerned, yes. So I need to explain to you, sir. Oh, the question that goes to Rahul. Yes. So what yes. Rahul is saying, they like in section 75, we have made or we have proposed an amendment. Previously, the non-resident company who does not have any PE, they were not supposed to file any tax return in Bangladesh. So this year. What we have done is like we have waived that requirement means they will have to file tax return in Bangladesh. So now the question Rahul is asking to you is like whether it is specifically meant for digital company or because we are taking supply from many overseas suppliers. They're supplying goods from overseas or there are a lot of non-resident company who are our shareholders. We're just giving them dividend. So they are also a non-resident here. So whether you know, it is meant for especially for the digital company or for all companies, sir. Uh, as far as uh, my knowledge goes, this is for all company, I should say. So, what is your opinion, Mr. Snashish? Uh, sir, uh, I tried to speak to the concerned team members. So, what is happening? The world is struggling with these uh, digital taxes. And there are roughly 80 plus companies who are operating in more than 150 countries. And probably they are not giving taxes at country level. So perhaps sir, what you know is like OECD and BAPS regulation, 148 countries has agreed that all these company will have to pay taxes where the consumers are located from, uh, I should say, 1st of January 2024. So there is an exemption until 30th, uh, 31st December 2023. So we don't know the rule yet. If the rule comes into the place, then we'll be able to know whether this will be applicable for all companies or only for digital companies. But they're trying to address the digital company first. Sir. So far, I'm aware. I don't know whether Rahul got my point clear or not. Uh, yes, Nairshish, that's that's uh, clearly mentioned. Uh, so yeah, maybe, sir, if you can give some clarity on that, because uh, the way I also interpret this, sir, is that uh, this should clearly be applicable only to digital companies, uh, which, you know, do uh, huge business uh, in the respective countries. But because of not having a physical presence in that country, uh, uh, they are actually not paying any taxes to the country concerned where they derive significant revenues from. Uh, yes, uh, uh, th that's why government is trying uh, to uh, to make law in this regard. And uh, as Nasha said, uh, it will be clear to all of us that uh, what will be the proce procedure if rule is in place so so till uh, then we are waiting for the rule uh, but i think uh, there will be a complexity will be, uh, will be uh, will arise further that if there is any conflicting provision between the uh, dta and our domestic law so we will examine further after uh, after the inception of this uh, new issues we will examine for that then. thank you sure sir thanks for that thank clarity you. thank you rahul if i can just interrupt you there for a second um dr abdul Rof, sir has joined us so if we can kindly go back to him his deliberation and then uh, have you asked the second question which is related to VAT? 
Yeah, yeah, sure, Mashur, uh, Mashur Bhai. Yeah. I was about to say that. Uh, let's oh. hear uh, Dr. Abdul Rauf, sir, first. Oh, okay, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So it is my pleasure um, to invite Dr. Mohammad Abdul Rauf, Director General, VAT Intelligence and Investigation, uh, National Board of Revenue, who has kindly consented to be the special guest today to deliver his address. I'm sure we are waiting to hear from him. So, sir, uh, thank you so much, and uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very, thank you very much. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Snehashish delivered it very well, though I was uh, uh, away from the from the session. I understand that he, he, he did no mistake, <laughs> so I find less points to, to deliberate. Uh, I shall be happy if there is any any query regarding VAT, uh, but then uh, I can uh, shed some more lights. Uh, I believe Mr. Snehashish did well, but um, in spite of that, if there uh, there require some um, um, some different views uh, on any non clarity, it shall be better for me uh, to answer. Huh? Uh, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so I think uh, Rahul, I think we can go to your question then. Sure. Do you want me to take VAT queries first, or there is one more on the income tax? Should we complete that first, or I, I think we can go with the VAT and then come back. To, sure. Either it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, maybe because uh, Rob sir may be busy, so maybe we can take VAT first. Uh, so, sir, uh, thank you for uh, gracing this uh, gracing uh, this occasion with your presence. What we wanted to understand, sir, one of the uh, proposed amendments is that uh, the ITES services, specifically the uh, software development and customization, would now be subjected to a VAT rate of 15%. Uh, what we wanted to understand, sir, is that for all other ITES services, because that's a very huge bucket, you know, ITES services includes lot many activities other than software development and customization as well. So will the reduced 5% VAT rate apply for all other services other than software development and customization or the 15% rate applies for all ITES services? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Snashish. Uh, Mr. Sinashish, can you please uh, please help me? Uh, so far, uh, so far, I, I remember the, there are some changes in uh, in this area. Uh, we have a definition of IT enabled services. We have definition. In that definition, there were about uh, 19 to 20 items. Uh, items are there. There was one item: software development and customization software development and customization. It was there in the definition of uh, IT enabled services. In this year, in this year, this portion has been deleted from this definition. This portion has been deleted from this definition. Software development and customization. This portion has been deleted from IT enabled services definition. What does this mean? This means Oh, and, and another thing should 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 be pointed here. In our SRO, in our basic exemption SRO, software was was exempted by the basic exemption SRO at manufacturing stage. At manufacturing stage, software manufacturing was exempted, exempted. So there was some sort of uh, some sort of conflict, conflict contradiction, you can say. So in this year, so, so what happened? What happened? That is uh, the um, uh, another point needs to be mentioned that software development, software development or software sale, software itself is a goods, not a service in in customs and VAT parlance. In customs and VAT parlance, software is a goods. Software is not a service. Software is a goods. So software was a goods. Software development was exempted at manufacturing stage. But again, software development and customization remained included in the definition of the service of IT enabled services. The, so 
that was a that was a conflict and contradiction. So this year, from the definition of service, software development and customization has been excluded. It is there in the manufacturing stage exemption list. So now the people who are who are developing software, who are developing software, they shall remain exempted in the manufacturing stage. Mr. Sinashish, can you can you clar clarify me why the question of Miss 15 percent came? Maybe I may uh, maybe that I am not aware. So, Mr. Sinashish, yeah. can you please? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I can hear you, sir. So Rahul, can you hear us? Rahul? Yeah, yes, Sinashish. So what sir has mentioned very categorically. So you see there was the SRO back in 2019, which is known as clarification on services SRO 186. So that has categorically mentioned what will include ITES. Huh? So out of this, I see one of them was software development and customization. Yeah, so yeah. only this part has been removed from here. Only right. this part. So okay. if you remove this part, if you re remove this part, if it is a software, so still there are exemption for software at manufacturing stage. Manufacturing stage. So then, right. yeah, so you might get that exemption. But if it is as a service, like it is not a software, rather you are taking services from some company, not as a software. So in that case, uh, this will not be categorized as services any longer. Okay. You know, okay. under ITS. So I believe right. you got the answer. Eh? Yeah. So just to clarify uh, what I understood from both uh, Rauf sir and yourself, Snashi, is, is that from the category of ITES services, the development and customization activity has been removed. 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 As a result of which, all other activities falling within the original SRO, except software development and customization, would continue to be subjected yes. to 5% VAT rate. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, yes. Another question, sir, and, and you know, first of all, uh, uh, I, I would appreciate the fact that uh, you know the board and the government has realized the uh, problems faced by the industry in collecting the mushok certificates within uh, such a short time period which was brought in last year and have extended that uh, for you know additional two tax periods that's a very mm -hmm. welcome change sir yeah, and yeah. really mm -hmm. brings a lot of relief for all the companies operating in bangladesh but sir, uh, with the same breath, when you know uh, such a benefit has been brought in and some mm -hmm. relaxation has been given to the mm -hmm. industry, uh, can we understand also, sir, what is the rationale behind uh, reducing the? Sorry. 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 What is the rationale behind? Yeah. So, uh, sir, to understand what is the rationale behind reducing the timeline for depositing VAT from 15 days to seven days, sir? Um, actually, actually, the timeline has not been reduced. It has been extended. It has not been reduced. It has been extended. Yeah. How? How? Previously, the provision was provision was VAT has to be deposited within 15 days from the deduction. Within Correct. 15 days from deduction. Correct. So if you are deducting on 5th January, you have to deposit by 20th January. If right. you are deducting on 6th January, you have to deposit by 21st January. Yeah. If you are deducting on 10th January, you have to deposit by 25th January. It was the previous previous provision that from the date of deduction, you have to deposit within 15 days. It was the provision earlier. But the new provision is more liberal to you. The new provision is you have to deposit after the tax period within seven days. That means the whole month you do not need to deposit. The okay. whole month you will deduct from 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 from, from month uh, the date one to the last date. Then you you accumulate all the month's deduction. Right. Then you deposit within seven days of the next month. So it is it is Can a it is a real for you. Correct, correct. Uh, understood, sir. Understood. Thanks for clarifying. I, I probably misunderstood the uh, uh, changes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, Ra Rahul, Rahul, it is, Rahul, Rahul, this is my bad ex actually, I should say. I could not make you guys understand. So technically speaking, this is one of the positive change that has been proposed to this bill, I should say, because every day you had 
to deposit all this VAT. You will have to keep one people to deposit this VAT. Rather, I, I think you should encourage this sort of practice and through this chamber even because these are positive thing. And what we are trying to do is like you'd like to reduce cost of doing business in Bangladesh. So you'll have to, you know, at least by word of mouth, you'll have to say people that these are the good things and uh, this will make your life easier, Rahul. Definitely agree, agree, Shneash. This is actually a very welcoming change. So really appreciate uh, the board uh, understanding the pain of the industry uh, operating in Bangladesh and giving relaxations on various counts. So, you know, those were my, you know, uh, top queries on VAT. Uh, maybe uh, if there is, and I believe that there could be uh, sufficient time, can we have one last query from a tax perspective sure. also? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, one question, and maybe Sneashish, uh, just to clarify, you mentioned as part of your presentation that for uh, appeals to tribunal, and above there there you there is a requirement of pre deposit and earlier that pre deposit used to be uh, for the entire disputed demand including uh, interest and penalties right but as part of the amendment if i heard you correctly you are saying penalties would be now excluded from the disputed demand calculation would that include interest or it would not include interest So I think this question is related to VAT. This is not related to income tax. So the change has been brought in, I should okay. say, uh, income VAT Act 2012, not in oh. income oh. tax ordinance 1984. So Sar is there to answer your question. So Sar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I have to ask you a question. I have to ask you a question. I have to ask you a question. Only principal will be better. And interest. So the, 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 the change is the change is your burden has been reduced. Correct. So your burden has been reduced. Previously, your deposit deposits base, your deposits base included penalty. Now in your deposits base, from your deposits base, penalty has been excluded. So so the, the 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 summary is while you are filing appeal you 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 now shall require to pay less to deposit less this is the summary this is the chance huh? uh, agreed sir uh, maybe sir just a further question to that so say yeah. uh, if if the, and, and you know maybe my uh, i uh, understood it in the context of income tax where interests are also applicable when a demand is raised such may not be the case for VAT where only, you know, a demand and penalty is raised. So we are saying that as part of this amendment, only now the principal demand would be considered penalties would be excluded for the purposes of pre-deposit. Is that a right understanding, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, principal, uh, principal amount means uh, only, only, only penalty has been, has been removed, but you know, uh, in 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 bangla core in english tax this is this is defined in vat law core mm. mm -hmm. tax tax includes the vat law says tax includes value added tax supplementary duty right turnover tax fine penalty interest all, all this means tax right the the previous provision was 20% of the tax has to be deposited. It was previous provision. But now, present provision is, uh, 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 it, shall, it, it shall exclude penalty from there. That means, that means, uh, uh, that means uh, value added tax, supplementary duty, interest, those those shall remain within the base. If I'm not, not wrong, Mr. Sneshish can clarify, uh, the, the wording is not with me now. Huh? Yeah, no, no, sir. You are you are absolutely correct, sir. So you can yeah. only penalty has been excluded. The penalty so, has, has been excluded from the base. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, sir, uh, and thank you, Sneha Shesh, uh, for clarifying that. I, I, I 
I rest my queries. Uh, that's all from my side. Uh, leave it for the floor for further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul, for your questions. Well, uh, can I ask uh, if there are any other questions from the floor? OK, um, since there aren't, uh, people are waiting to ask the questions. I will quickly request one or ask one to Abdus uh, Rof, sir. Sir, uh, the Nordic Chamber is a very small chamber uh, or, you know, the trade association and uh, the chambers are always small in nature. Uh, ours is only 50 members and our portfolio is also small. Our earnings are also small. But we are having to pay 15% VAT on everything, which significantly reduces our ability to host events and promote trade. So if there is any opportunity to get a VAT exemption for our chamber or the likes, that would be very helpful. So, sir, if you have any input for us on that regard. This is the business of NBR, National Board of Revenue. You, uh, what type of uh, VAT you are you are referring for? Referring referring to, sir, uh, everything, any income that we generate, starting from subscription income oh. to any the any advertisement that we get, uh, oh. any oh. services we take, we pay oh. VAT full oh, okay. fifty percent of it. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I I got your points. You know there are many chambers like 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 this, yeah, big, medium, small. Hmm. Uh, uh, chambers, uh, VAT exemption. Uh, there is uh, no uh, such precedent, I think. Eh? I think eh? you only if one chamber is given, then other chambers will also raise the same query. However, uh, there is uh, always a scope. If you uh, if you like, you can file application to the National Board of Revenue, uh, like a uh, house rent. House rent VAT has been exempted for a for a for one university, there are many universities, but the Asian University for Women to to help the women's education to grow, the house rent VAT has been exempted for uh, Asian University for Women. But there are many universities that they, they are paying VAT. So, if you have uh, such any pressing need, and you can convince the policymakers, uh, I think it is possible. You may do your part. You may file application and pursue. Yes, for sir. the best. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, and uh, the Nordic Chamber, as you might know, sir, we are always trying to bring in more investment to Bangladesh. Currently, we have a small membership portfolio of about only 50 companies, but they together has already uh, every year they contribute to over two billion dollars uh, to the national exchequer. So in that terms, our members are big and we have a huge impact on the national economy. And I'm very happy to report that all our members are compliant uh, because of their global standards. So we are very proud to be a very compliant chamber. 5% of Bangladesh's total export go directly to the Nordic region, and we have been supported by the ambassadors and the embassies here, and also by the policymakers at different stages um, across the board. So thank you very much, sir, and uh, thank you to Iqbal, sir, as well. Uh, are there any other questions from the floor? Uh, Tarim bhai, uh, Nasser bhai, I see you there. Um, no, I think Sneshish Bhai has given us a very thorough and elaborate, uh, definitely detailed uh, presentation. Uh, if it's if it's okay, Sneshish Bhai, for you to share the slides uh, with the members, with us, then we can give it to the members. Uh, that would be very Sneshish helpful. I have, already, I have already shared the slides to Fantastic. Uh, Mashur Bhai over the email, oh. so he can circulate it back to the members. Thank you so much. You. Uh, I believe if since there's no other questions, I'm also looking at the chat box. I don't see any questions. Uh, we can go ahead and conclude yeah. uh, the event. Back thank to you, you. Mashur. Yeah. Thank you, Tarin Bhai. Firstly, I would like to thank Iqbal sir and Abdurraf sir again for coming to this event and joining us today. 
They are very, very busy, especially in this late June. And yet they have accommodated us and our request to kindly participate at our event today. So wholehearted thank you to both of you, sirs, and we hope okay. that we will find you by okay. our sides at our during our needs in the coming days as well. So thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you, Iqbal, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. আপনাকে <laughs> 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 we hope Hello. you you will arrange uh, such type of uh, sessions in coming days and uh, by giving us a uh, basically reasonable time so that, that uh, we can prepare ourselves for such type of uh, session particularly after deliberation of mr snashes it is uh, very difficult to say uh, more words to add more words so if you give us more time I think we can uh, contribute uh, uh, a lot uh, in, in such type of sessions. And uh, actually, in this through this session, I learned a lot. Thank you, Snashish, and thank you, Nordic Chamber, uh, and thank you all. Thank, thank you, sir. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank Snehashish Da for his erudite presentation today. We have all largely benefited from his knowledge regarding the upcoming budget. This session would not have been successful without the participation of our members and our stakeholders. I want to extend my heartfelt appreciation to you for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend this webinar. Also, I would like to thank our patrons and partners, the Embassy of Denmark, Norway and Sweden for their unrelenting support over the years to promote and facilitate productive dialogue for the Nordic, Nordic businesses in Bangladesh. Additionally, I want to extend my most sincere appreciation to the Executive Committee of the Chamber, headed by Mr. Tari Naman, President, for their vision and support which has culminated in this webinar. Lastly, Laviva Tasin and Tiasa Lansari has proved instrumental in, organization this, in organizing this webinar and providing much needed logistical lo support to make it possible today. Thank you to both. Before ending, I want to remind you to kindly follow the Nordic Chamber on the social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter to keep in touch with our activities. Again, thank you for attending our webinar. Should you have any questions, queries, or comments, do not hesitate to contact the NCCI Secretariat. Stay well and stay safe. Good evening. This is Moshur signing off this budget update session organized by the Nordic Chamber of Commerce and Industries in Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you and Salaam Alaikum, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Salaam Alaikum. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. if I can request you to stay back, Dada as well. I'm here. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir.